Hello there. Yes, you saw it just start up, didn't you? <clears throat> Let me switch to my wireframe glasses so you can see more of my face. Apparently, I forgot to turn my light on. <laughs> yes, it's a very bright light. Bright light, Billy, bright light. Um, so it's election night. No, it's actually the day after election night. And you are probably sitting around in front of your computer or in front of the TV watching the election night coverage or the polling results of uh, counting the ballots and stuff and being all nervous about who's going to win because it keeps going back and forth. Mm, people are acting all suspicious about all the ballots they've been finding. It's like, well, that's what happens with mail-in ballots when you, you know, totally virtually defund the postal service and expect them to still run a normal election year uh, task and you've basically undercut them, tried to get rid of all the transport machines to make them have to process mail manually. Fortunately, the people who work there said, uh-uh, no, we're not getting rid of those. We're still going to do use automated machines because that'll just make it more efficient. Why would we get rid of the things that are efficient? Hmm. But I'm not going to belabor that point too much. Issues that we have right now are the fact that people are counting the ballots and they are acting all weird and freaky about it because they just want their candidate to win. And my best advice to you right now is the, you voted. There's nothing you can do about the outcome now. You've done your part. Watching it will only make you more nervous about it. So go online and play a game. Sorry about that. Just had to move. Um, I've done the rehearsal for this video like three or four times, so pardon me while I do a little bit of cleanup right now. Um... <clears throat> and always remember to check your shirt pockets for things you might have stuck in there by accident. You can't read this because it's backwards, but you know what it is. It's a mini. Okay, so we're all cleaned up now. Um, things that I wanted to talk about to distract you from the election. Um, things that I'm planning on doing. I was going to try to remember... That I'd posted on my Facebook wall a link to my infamous lava soap trolling video, which has 99 views as of today. It's had that many for the past several days, and posted a uh, link to it on my Facebook wall saying, please, just one person, go and watch this real quick so I can bump it over in a three-digit neighborhood. It's still sitting at 99 views. So you know what that tells me? The people on my Facebook wall do not watch my videos. No one, well, they, they realize I'm new at this, I'm not all that good at it yet. So they know that the videos are not really going to be worth watching. And I, I kind of don't blame them. I'm not that good at it yet either. I mean, I watch my videos at least once to re review them to make sure they're worth being uploaded. And that's why I usually end up doing two or three takes on them. And since I don't have a script for them, or I don't try to use a script... I end up forgetting to say things, or I said things in an earlier take, and then I forget to say them later and think that I've said them, so later when I repeat them, at least in my knowledge I'm repeating it, it's news to you. So that's frustrating, but that's something that we... But anyway, so yes, go to my uh, channel, and please watch my Lava Soap trolling video. It's totally silent, so you don't have to worry about putting your headphones on or m turning on your speakers for the rest of the people in the house to listen to it because there's no sound. It's nothing but me scrolling through these pictures, um, zooming in on the text to, uh, to show off what I said, and uh, pretty much just making fun of Lava Soap. Um, I was going to do a video talking about trolling and the nature of trolling, the effect of trolling, and whatever, but I haven't really had a chance to do that much studying and research on it yet, so... It's just not there yet. Um, other things I've been planning on. I know I need to do a follow-up to Wandroid number four. Because I had forgotten to mention the problems of... When trying to make a lord. Remember, a lord is alignment good. Can only be good. So, lords learn the priestly spells. So, 
what I wanted to do was level up a good wizard, and then until it gets all the spells of the wizard school, and then change it over to a lord so that it'll learn the priest spells, so you'll have a really badass fighter that can use some extraordinarily good armor that has all the spells of both schools. Um, the only thing I found out the hard way was that as of, I think it was Wandroid 3, when you are playing a character with alignment good, if you're wandering through the dungeon and, there, and you happen upon a party of friendly monsters, if you kill them, then you are basically doing what an evil character would do. So if you're playing a party of good characters, then their alignment will change to evil. So you have to be careful about that. So if you're trying to level up somebody to make them into a lord, let mo let friendly monsters go alive. Don't kill them just because that's what the game's all about. Um, so anyway, so I haven't done that yet. Uh, I haven't gotten through level 6 yet. So I still need to do the finishing up thing. Uh, I also didn't talk that much about... I remember in the uh, spoiler-free edition of the video, I didn't remember to talk about how Kung Fu characters have multiple attacks per round. Not like, you know, number of hits per attack, but number of attacks. That literally, uh, I think at like level 30, a Kung Fu character can have four attacks in a single round. So literally, when you meet up with a group of four monsters, your Kung Fu character can be the only person doing the fighting, and he can finish the entire fight himself in one round. So yeah, I want to level up a good uh, Kung Fu character to go around with my Samurai and Lord, but uh, I haven't gotten that far yet. I think I'm trying to level up a wizard so I can have a Kung Fu character that gets wizard spells. Because unlike the ninja characters, the Kung Fu characters don't learn any magic spells. Um, the, the ninjas, they learn the alchemy spells, but uh, that's them. Uh, other things I was going to show is the next thing that I'm going to do, which I haven't gotten to the point of doing yet because I'm still fussing about Wandroid, is this game called Dungeon Master. From back in the early 90s, the Apple II GS came out with a game back in the days in the height of uh, pirate protection schemes where uh, manufacturers would... Uh, write some critical portion of the code for the program on a sector and make it so that the computer knew to put it on a particular sector on the disk and then they would damage the disk on that particular sector so that when you bought it and went home with it if you went to go and make a copy of the disk that the game was on it would copy everything but that one sector because it was a damaged block the, your computer would refuse to read it and copy everything except that critical piece of data and then when you tried to launch the program on the copy, it would fail to run because it could not find that critical piece of data. Um, this game had a slightly different evil type of protection scheme. Uh, it wrote your characters to the disk. It was You were not allowed to make copies of the game. It, it would do the same thing with the uh, bad block sector to uh, with critical data so that you couldn't make copies of the game and play them at all. Not even if you were the owner of the original game, if you'd bought it and were playing the copy in a separate disk drive. But also it would save the characters to the disk, and if you got killed in a dungeon, it would write your death to the disk. And since you... It's a different kind of party-based game than usual dungeon games, so it would literally ruin the game. You would literally be unable to play it after that because, one, you couldn't make a copy and play the copy instead of the original. And when you got killed in the dungeon, the, the original would get ruined. You would be unable to play because you don't have a narrating character to play the game with. So it was uh, extremely unpopular because it would piss people off. But uh, finally someone poured it to the phone and uh, I wonder what would happen if I get killed on my phone. Would my phone stop functioning? <laughs> But that's beside the point. Um, I'm here basically right now just to distract you from voting. But uh, I wanted to mention that I'm going to be doing something about this game later. And uh, still struggling with Wandroid number 4. Uh, the latest news that I have on Wandroid number 7 is that the developer is still trying to advertise the game in Japan. 
so I don't think he's quite ready to um, port it to the American market. And uh, he tweeted recently that it was November and it was time for his fans to start playing the game, so he was trying to curry favor and get more downloads. And I replied back to him, and the American market is still waiting to be able to play the game. I actually took my comment and I put it in Google Translate and translated it into Japanese so that I could tweet back to him in Japanese. I put in parentheses afterwards. I, I, I put this through Google Translate. So in case it's a bad translation, I'm sorry. But, uh, but I wanted to at least make it so that he would understand what I was saying. That the American market is still waiting for Wanderer number 7. Even though I'm still on Wanderer number 4. Um, I think that probably his Wandering number 7 is going to be a much more um, adventurous game with new and interesting challenges for the gamers of today. Uh, I didn't spend a lot of energy on Wandering number 1 because it had all the puzzles that Wizardry number 1 had. So, you know, gamers of today would say, I've done that before. That's no nothing new to me. Um, so, you know, Wandering... Number one was probably pretty trite stuff for most people. And going all the way through Wandering number four, uh, two and three were probably just more of the same. Uh, Wandering number four was the first time that I saw him do some really extravagant stuff with the dungeons. But he's settled down to seven level dungeons. It used to be a ten level dungeon. So there's that. But anyway, so after that, we're going to have Wandering uh, Dungeon Master. Uh... Apparently you can have different dungeon maps, although there's only one in development right now. And it is, interestingly, a high-resolution dungeon. This is literally a very faithful port. I used to have this game on the Apple II GS, and this is a very faithful port of the game. Um, there is a Hall of Champions around here. You start the dungeon out just wandering around with an empty party. And you've got to go and find, here we are, the Hall of Champions. I don't know if you could read that back there. That was the problem with the game on the, on the phone here. I can barely read that. Let me switch back to my horn rim glasses, my Roy Orbison glasses, and see if I can see it any better. Yeah, I can see champions. Yeah, I can kind of see it. But anyway, so... The way to play this game is to go through the Hall of Champions, and the champions are literally paintings on the wall, or pictures of them, and you simply resurrect them into your party, and now we have a party of one. He has a sword and an empty hand, and... No, that's not what I wanted to hit. Game exit, no. Anyway, so... You're supposed to resurrect four characters, as you can see right here. There's space for four people there. And then go into the dungeon proper. But I don't know what this is here. Um, I don't know about saving the game. Um, as usual, the, uh, the game comes with literally no documentation to teach you how to play it. Um, you know that you're going to have weapons and you're going to run into monsters and you have to figure out the mapping of the dungeon. Um, apparently there is mapping in the game, but again, I haven't figured it out yet because I haven't really gotten past recruiting my party and going into the very in, uh, beginning part of the dungeon. Um, haven't run into any monsters yet, uh, so I have that to look forward to, but, you know... As far as I can tell, I've checked on the guy's website. I need to check it on the computer, but I looked at it on my phone. And uh, he's got a blog that I think about a year ago he said there were some glitches that he needed to fix. And there was nothing pretty much after that. So I don't think he's done anything with it. So I think it's just that this is about as good as it's going to get. So I'm going to have to learn how to play the game and uh, make a video showing people how to play it so that they can download it and play it. So yeah, that's this game. Now that I no longer have to read. Okay, so... Let me see. Let's see if we can wander around and find... The 
way into the dungeon. I should make my picture a little smaller. Not somewhere other than. And if I get smaller, do I need to get closer? Is that better enough? Okay. Now I just need to hold the tripod to keep myself from falling into my face. Well, with the phone in the front of the tripod, it tends to more easily fall towards me. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to have to figure this out. I've kind of wandered into the dungeon a little bit. And taken the first stairwell down. There isn't a whole lot of real animation going on here. Uh, let's go ahead and resurrect another character and see. Where is the door? Ah, there we are. You see, it does have anim uh, animation sounds. So when you find objects in the dungeon, you can pick them up and put them in a person's hand. I don't know how to eat yet or drink. Um, See, so here is a loaf of bread. Oh, and yes, of course, also there's the, when you run into a wall, everybody says, ooh. That was always fun. Uh, another thing I don't know about yet is how to read scrolls. And you see, you've also got a limited number of hand spaces for carrying things, so it's like, well, what am I supposed to do? I can't set down the bread and read the scroll. What's the point of keeping the scroll if it's just going to be instructions or something? Not that I know how to read the scroll. I think this is for using spells. Yes, that's where we're trying to use spells. So, yeah, that's what this game is like. Um, over the stairs down. Yes, all doors sound the same. And of course, I can't see past my light. Maybe if I brighten up the screen. Is that too bright for you? So we take the key and... Yes, you just put it in the keyhole, and poof. What's going to happen when I actually run into some monsters? Because I don't even know how to fight. I don't know how to save my progress or anything. I've seen screenshots on the... Uh, Play store. Obviously, this is not the key to this door. Yeah, this is one of the first puzzles.
So yeah, got this adventure to figure out. Because I knew to go around it because when you step on the second thing, it makes the door close. So I hope you didn't leave any monsters up with you because when you step on that first thing, the door opens. So no matter what, when you leave that place, you are leaving it with monsters being able to come out. So yeah, this is the... Uh, Dungeon Master. It's probably going to be a very slow video again. Because it's going to be a lot of me traipsing around the dungeon. I want to run into some monsters so I can get killed and figure out what happens when you die. Black boots. No. Well, he can carry them, but how does he wear them? What is that? That's a student set of him. Okay, so you can pick up and drop the uh, black boots, but you can't really wear them. How do you equip armor? Okay, I can see how to change your lineup. Yeah, we're gonna have to figure this out. How to read scrolls. Well, I know how to throw things. So if I want to carry a bunch of stuff, all I have to do is just keep throwing it in front of me. Trying to find there was I remember the one time I was playing through and there was a door where a mummy was standing behind me behind the door and I didn't think to go and unlock that door. Okay, there's the stairs back up. And yes, here we have a mummy. Well, he's hitting my character, but my character isn't hitting him. Huh. 
Oh. Okay, getting people killed. And this is how you do this. I've lost my torch, haven't I? Okay, so he has an axe and a torch. And we have three empty character spaces. And that's how you play this game, apparently. Get everybody killed. But yeah, the uh, spell thing. This guy has... Like, no magic. Apparently you can cast a few spells. These are supposed to be apparently for casting spells. Mobile's nonsense. So that's for casting spells apparently. But I don't know how to uh, consume food or in water. I don't know how to uh, equip better armor if you get a hold of some better stuff. Uh, I can see where you would be able to change weapons. Uh, equip a torch when you pick one up. What is this on the wall? Fauci, and apparently that's better than an axe. I'll know where to find it. And again, we have a scroll, but I don't know how to read them yet. Okay, so that's also how you open traps and walls. Yeah, there'll be a little marking on the floor, or on the wall there, and uh, tap it, and the wall opens right up, and whatever's inside, you find Okay, so we're making some progress in this game, but not enough. Uh, especially since we can get our characters killed. I hope it doesn't remember this stuff. So I'm, I'm going to exit the game now and uh, go back to the main screen of the phone. And... Continuing to distract you, I will now show off panels of Inspirobot, my favorite silly pastime. Cover your tongue, especially in this pandemic. Put a sock on it. Not a dirty one. Business begins with parenting. Don't doubt it. <laughs> Are unhealthy relationships the clockworks of a vacuum? Ooh. Colorful stuff. Tickle the internet. That's my intent. Get you laughing with ticklings. So you, we want to eat a candy bar right now. Milky Way Mid Midnight Minis. It's dark chocolate, the kind that nobody likes. It's not in my family. I'm not a person who likes dark chocolate. Look at the rich, creamy chocolatey. Yes, yeah, so you wanted to watch this video so you could listen to me eat. Don't forget about the moon pies. Banana flavored. Remember, not vanilla. Anyway. Be embarrassed about your intestines. Very important. So yeah, it's election night. You're fretting about the votes. Just remember, if you voted, you've done your part. Not much you can do uh, beyond that to change anything. Just watching it is kind of like watching a football game that's a rerun. It's funny how that's not all that different from watching a game live. But that's basically what this is. You've done your part in voting. Nothing that you see on TV is going to change how you voted 
or how your vote affects the outcome. You've already done your part to affect the outcome, so you've got other things to do. That's basically my lesson here.